It's time to move over, Maximus Six Hero. There's a new sheriff in town. Hello everybody and welcome to Tech Uploaded. I'm Chris and today it's time to take a look at the Maximus Seven Hero Z97 based motherboard. Now it's finally here, Z97 is on the scene and the flagship ROG board is also on the scene with it. And I tell you what, the graphic design department got a little bit of a break on this one. I mean, wow. Those two are very similar, but you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? All right, well, it's time to dig into this box and take a look at what goodies lie underneath this little flap on the front here and what goodness awaits as far as the board itself, and then take a quick look at what's on the outside. But you know, really, it's what's on the inside that counts. All right, so here is the box. And it's like I said before, it looks very similar to the Maximus Six Hero box. It has the same fancy little flap that you can open up here and, and take a look inside there. So you can see all of the different components just by flapping that open and taking a look at all the goodness on the inside as, as usual with the ROG line. It's sticking with the red and black theme, which is nice to see because it goes so well with cases like the H440 red and black. Here's the back. That lip has a lot of details as well, but not going to just read through the box. I'm going to go over these as we're actually looking at the board because I think that's what everybody really wants to see. Get our hands on it. Start messing around. So let's crack open the box and see what kind of little accessories and things come inside here. All right, popping up the lid. All that comes out. You can kind of see the, all the little graphics over there. And then you got your nice little protective cover. So remove that. Set that off to the side, and there it is, loud and proud, the motherboard itself. Look at that. Oh, it's got that smell. I gotta sniff it. Oh, smells like brand new electronics. I love that smell. So there it is, uh, just really sharp looking board. I mean, you, I just, I love the look of these boards. I, I can't help it. These just, these do it for me in the looks department. So let's grab this and just pull out the entire motherboard for now. Set it off the camera. And then take a look at everything you get in the box itself. So you get the nice Q connectors. These are, these are a huge plus for me. I really like that they include these things. They make installing all of your little motherboard headers so much easier. And then one, two, three SATA 6 cables. So that's nice that you get those. Let me see here. Nope, actually, I'm wrong. Six cables. Look at that. Two, four, six. Got to do my math. So you've got, let's see. Looks like they give you one of each. So you got three straight connector and three right angle connector in there. So you can kind of see by looking at them there. Uh, some of them have that right angle and some of them are straight. Nice depending on what you're installing and where. Again, the nice back plate that I really enjoy that uh, ASUS uses. It doesn't have the little pins sticking out on it. It's just flat, which makes installing into the case a lot easier. I really enjoy that. And then it does have this really nice I'm trying to actually get a good look at it here. It's it's not black, but it's like a like a graphite, reflective graphite color to it. I don't know. The, there's a lot of glare from the lights, but that's that's nice looking. I really like the the look of that. So continuing on with that tradition, and then of course you get your SLI cable. So if you're doing AMD Crossfire, then you don't have to worry about running a cable. But for the SLI folks in the Nvidia camp, you do. I've always thought this was a nice touch. They throw in these little stickers, and what you can do is stick these on all of your crap and keep track of what it was. So uh, if you need to label, this this is what I actually really like. SATA one, you know, for hard drive one, and then, you know, your other device, you know, maybe the second hard drive or whatever, but it's just nice to keep track of things. It's, it's a nice little touch. They've included this once again, the do not disturb, and then enter. So the Republic of Gamers little door tag there is on the scene. And then finally, look at this nice little book. And I guarantee you if I do this, there's my driver disc. And then your little case badge is inside of there as well. So they've included that once again. And then of course, the very handy manual. There's so many features in here. You might actually need to give this a read. So with that out of the way, let me throw everything back in the box. Let's break down the board and actually take a close look or a closer look at what you get. All right, so the easiest way to do this, I think, is going to be to literally just go down the page of features that ASUS actually makes available on their website and just kind of point them out one by one as we go. First thing I want to note, this is a heavy board. This may be the heaviest motherboard uh, that I've ever actually dealt with. Uh, there's a lot of heft because of these heat sinks and just a lot of really solid feel to it. It's a nice, 
thick PCB, which is always good to see. It's got some nice rigidity to it. And let's just, let's begin. All right, so we'll start at the top and just kind of move down. Uh, right here, you've got this big honking heat sink that's right below your uh, auxiliary 12V, which you're gonna have there on your eight pin for your power for the CPU. And then your CPU optional and CPU fan are right over here, as well as your little code sensor window here with your start and reset buttons. This is nothing new. You do have your mem okay button. And then in addition to that, you've actually got this little button right here, and that is for your key bot. So we'll get into that a little bit later, but the, that's a new button. So moving down uh, underneath this big honker right here, uh, which looks really nice too. I love the matte black, a little red accent to it. Uh, that's gonna be the Extreme Engine Digic Plus 3 chips with the 60 amp ferret chokes and the 10K black metallic capacitors, which you can see right along here. And then of course, the star of the show, the LGA 1150 socket. Now that is there because it's going to use fourth and fifth generation Intel chips. So once Broadwell hits the scene or Devil's Canyon and of course the refreshed Haswell chips as well as the fourth generation Haswell chips that are already out, you can use all of them on this board. And then kind of heading over here further down this side, of course you've got your usual complement of your DDR3 a dim, so you've got four of those there, and they can take up to 3200 plus in overclock mode. So you can really overclock the snot out of your memory if it will take it. And then of course your 24 pin standard, and then you've actually got right here, you can do six USB 3.0. All that'll hook up right here on the nice red USB 3 header. And then one thing to note, in addition to the two four pin here, you actually have uh, one, two, three and four. You've got four four pin PWM uh, you know, capable fan headers here and with the new AI suite uh, fan control software, you're actually gonna be able to control multiple fans off of just one of these headers, which is really nice. It's a nice new feature that's been added to the board. Then moving a little bit further down the board, this is new, this is your M.2 slot. Now keep in mind, this is PCI Express only. This has a maximum transfer rate of 10 gigabits per second. You're not gonna be able to use an M.2 SATA card here. It's gonna have to be uh, the PCI Express M.2. Now you'll note the board does not have PCI Express on the side. It's gonna implement it through this slot right here. So that is something to keep in mind. You have three PCIe 2.0, so you got one, two, three right there at X1, two PCI 3.0 X16, which are indicated in red. So you got those there, and then in addition to that, you do have your um, PCIe 2.0 by four down here at the bottom. So this is gonna be a great board for running dual GPUs. You're gonna get that full uh, time 16 for SLI and Crossfire on those two very clearly labeled red PCIe slots. Along the side here, you've got eight SATA six gigabit per second ports. And then of course the Z87 chipset is located beneath this very nice looking heat sink right here. And it does have this little acrylic piece of uh, plastic on it here that has, believe it or not, LEDs running down this side of it. So when this board is plugged in, you're not only gonna have, which we'll get to this in a minute, but you're not, you're not only gonna have the little red line that runs here for the PCB separation for the audio, but you're gonna have a nice little red accent that's gonna flow out into this little acrylic material here and just really light up that Republic of Gamers logo that you've got right there, which is gonna be pretty cool. And we'll kind of get up on that for you. I mean, that's, that's gonna be a really nice look, I think. I'm excited to see this plugged in for that. Getting a little more in depth on the bottom here, you of course got your usual uh, clear CMOS, which is very nice to have in case something shall go awry. Uh, in addition to having a memo K button up at the top and then all of your usual complement of things. So this is you know for when you're gonna be putting in your uh, little Q connectors over here for all of your connections on your case itself, as well as the fan header there for the four pin PWM chassis fan. And then finally, your USB and your HD audio. And then there's a little bit of an interesting button here. This is the soundstage button. So this gets into the Supreme FX audio portion of this. So you've got the usual red line shielding, which was seen on the Maximus 6 Hero. And then you do have Sonic Sense amplifier, Sonic Studio, Sonic Soundstage, and DTS Connect. Now what's interesting is this will actually allow you to change the soundstage that's on the op amp by just hitting a button. So you're gonna get a hardware changeover on this to have different kinds of effects and a different sound stage for a little bit of a different feel on how your audio is gonna sound with this integrated sound card. So 
Yes, it is an onboard sound card, and I believe this is still based off of a Realtek chip, but uh, it's supposed to give you pretty much the best onboard sound that you can really get out of a motherboard. Another thing you'll notice on the case, you've got some red accents. They may not be able to be easily picked up here on camera, but uh, in the detailed zoom in shots, you'll be able to see those and they kind of run in different places. So that's a nice additional little accent to have and it kind of clearly calls out the Supreme FX chip right there. Right then on the back of the motherboard, you've got your usual complement of I.O. here. So you've got your 7.1 audio and then you've got the Intel NIC, which actually has a little bit of a trick up a sleeve. Go over that in a minute. And then four USB 3.0. You've got your BIOS reset button, which is always nice, your D-sub for legacy support, and then your DVI, which is not surprising to see, and then HDMI and optical audio, as well as two USB 2.0 ports, and then your PS2 port for keyboard and or mouse. All right, so what's interesting about the LAN on this board is it actually uses a technology that they're calling the Intel Ethernet LAN Guard Game First 3. So they call it game networking taken to the next level. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to introduce packet favoring for transferring data for your games. And it's going to offer up to two times faster performance when you're in that mode. And the really cool thing is it has something called LandGuard, and they're calling it RJ45 reinvented. So what it is, it actually uses electrostatic discharge guards. So you're not going to suffer a catastrophic failure if you have a surge or a brownout or some kind of power fluctuation running into that network. And it's gonna supply a nice clean connection, which is one of the main reasons why I really like Intel NICs to begin with. All right, now one of the other things you're gonna get with the Supreme FX Audio on this one, I kind of mentioned this on the sound stage, but it, they're calling it Sonic Studio. And basically it's one click virtual sound. So you're gonna be able to switch between a whole slew of different sound stages that you wanna actually have on this board. And what's really cool about that is this can be updated via flash on the firmware. So you'll be able to continue to grow with this as different profiles come out and you know potentially even have profiles that are you know dialed in for a specific game. So that's really interesting. And then you can kinda of, you know do a virtual surround sound or anything like that. And then you're also going to have the Sonic Radar 2. So if you've used one of the other ROG boards and you're probably familiar with the Sonic Radar technology, it's kind of a visual representation of what's actually going on around you. All right, now turning the board over, if you actually look down here, there's a little chip right here that's got the little ROG logo on it. And what that actually is, is a chip called Keybot. And what Keybot is going to do is it's going to allow you to really expand the functionality of your keyboard. So you're gonna be able to set macro keys and all kinds of different combinations. One of the really great things you'll be able to do is assign function keys to things via the software, which is great for people like myself that have mechanical keyboards that are no frills and they just have the things that you need on them. You'll be able to actually set volume keys and you know maybe a key for email or something like that. And you can pretty much assign a shortcut key to anything you want. And the other cool thing, they're calling this S5 mode. So what you can do is assign actual keys on the keyboard to wake up the computer into a specific state. So like for example, F11 will do CPU level up to automatically overclock. F12 will take you uh, disable or enable XMP and delete will actually take you directly into the UF UEFI BIOS, which is really great. So you don't have to keep spamming the delete key. You can just hit it one time and your computer is going to boot right into the BIOS, which is going to be really nice. So you can get into that nice graphical interface of that UEFI BIOS to do all of your tweaking. Now what's really cool is this board's actually going to utilize something called TrueVolt USB, and it's going to give you a stable supply of five volt power front and back on your USB ports. Now you're wondering, okay, big deal, why is this so nice? Well, if you're someone like me and I use a D1 audio engine DAC, and when the computer boots up or wakes up from sleep, it makes a really loud pop in my speakers if I don't remember to turn off the D1 so that it's not getting that initial bump of power. So I'm actually pretty excited about that. It's a really small feature, but something that's gonna really benefit me. Now, apparently the UEFI BIOS is supposed to be greatly improved on this board. I will have to take a look at that after I do a build with this and kind of give you a tour of that, but it's gonna give you a lot of features that are gonna be graphical now. You're gonna be able to see your fan curves. You're gonna be able to set your XMP profiles. You're gonna be able to set your overclocks. Nothing that's really out of the ordinary from what we had before, but there's gonna be a lot of really new, great new features that are in here, especially the automatic overclocking. You're gonna be able to tell it what kind of CPU cooler you're using, and it's gonna kind of decide how high it's gonna let the voltage go based on that. Of course, you do have your usual things that you had before. So your RAM disk is back, so you're able to actually dynamically set your RAM, and you can have 20 times faster speed than even an SSD. 
So you know you might want to set various things to your RAM disk to speed up boot times, or you know do various things with you know with games or maybe in a piece of software. So that's really nice. AI AI Suite three is going to be included. Uh, CPU Z is going to be included. The Mem Tweak Kit is going to be there for you know kind of changing your timings and gauge how your memory is doing. Uh, and then of course uh, the USB UEFI BIOS flashback is still there by you know using that button. And then you just get a lot of other little stuff that comes with it as well. Uh, you get the option to install the ROG accessories, which you'll plug in down in the ROG accessory port at the bottom of the board. So you can add various things like the OC panel. They're really cool, actually, if you have a case that can support it, which you know, the H440 definitely does not. But you can have the front panel, the front base, that's going to give you a graphical representation of everything that you can actually do with the board itself. Uh, so you can tweak and change things using that without having to even go into the BIOS. So this board's going to be going into a build using an NZXT red and black H440 case, which will go very nice with the look of the board. And hopefully it's going to be around with me for a while so we can kind of go down this CPU journey that's going to be the Z97 chipset. Starting off using a 4770K, moving to Devil's Canyon when that comes out, and then testing this board out with Broadwell as soon as that hits the scene in the fall. So with any luck, this board will see quite a few different CPUs come and go through its 1150 socket. Thanks for watching as always, and if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button. That would help me out quite a bit. And you can also follow me on Twitter over at Tech Uploaded. So go ahead and follow little Twitter bird over there. And you know what? Don't be a stranger. Check back soon. Lots of good times coming with this Maximus 7 Hero.